Welcome to my channel, Living Linux. In an earlier video, I tried to install the Raspberry Pi 5 into the Argon 1 version 3 case. Um, I wasn't fully successful with that and I'm still not really sure if I did something wrong or that uh, there was a problem with the case, but I sent the case back and after a while I got a new one. And I tried it again. Wasn't successful at first, but in the end I got everything working. Wasn't really a smooth experience and judging from the post on the forum of Argon40, I wasn't the only one that didn't have a smooth experience. But the good part is that in the end, I got it working. So, uh, there were a couple of people that pointed out in the comments of my previous video that I didn't install the NVMe drive correctly. Well, that was a correct observation, but after the video, I reseeded it and it still didn't work. So I got a new one, I installed it and it still didn't work. And because I'm a lazy person, I, yeah, I wanted to do the installation from a micro SD card. And since you no longer have easy access to the micro SD slot with the Argon case, I didn't assemble it fully. That means that it's advised that you completely assemble it, put in all the screws, because they use pogo pins to power the NVMe drive. And when you don't put in all the screws, uh, especially the four screws uh, for the bottom of the case, you risk that the pogo pins do not make proper contact. And that can mean that the NVMe drive is not detected. Now with my first case, uh, I had not even installed the NVMe drive and I was just trying to see if I could boot it from micro SD. And with my first case, that didn't even work either. So from that experience, I really have the suspicion that the first case was not fully working correctly. But again, I'm not 100% sure. So if you want to install an NVMe drive, um, yeah, it's perhaps easier if you install Raspberry Pi OS on a USB stick. So that way you don't have to to open the case anymore to get the micro SD card out, uh, unless you don't mind keeping it in. So that's the thing about the pogo pins. Now, one other thing is that um, with Raspberry Pi OS, you have the imager and you can install Ubuntu 24.04. So at the time of recording this video, this is the 12th of July, and there are also other people that notice that they have serious performance problems with Ubuntu 24.04 with a Raspberry Pi 5. So someone even filed a bug But unfortunately, um, well, Ubuntu has not decided about the importance and it also hasn't been assigned yet. 
So if you want to try Ubuntu 24.04, yeah, um, you might run into some performance issues. One of the easiest things to see that you have the same performance issues is just simply start Firefox because it will take a long, long time before it actually comes up. And one of the other things is that I noticed that, um, yeah, let's just say you have Raspberry Pi OS on a micro SD card or a USB stick, you boot from there and you use the imager to put, for instance, as I did, Ubuntu 23.10 on the NVMe drive. So before you reboot to boot from the NVMe drive, you have to execute this command in Raspberry Pi OS because uh, there's a big chance that you have an old firmware that is not able to boot from the PCIe slot. So if you don't do this command, before you reboot after using the imager, it still won't boot from the NVMe drive. Now, one of the things is that, um, yeah, it is advised to do it on Raspberry Pi OS because if I try this on Ubuntu, it doesn't work. And this also means that uh, I can't install the uh, Argon controls, control script. There's also one other thing that uh, more people have noticed that even if you have the official Raspberry Pi 5 power supply, um, yeah, there seems to be a initialization issue. So the Raspberry Pi 5, um, when you have the power supply connected to the Argon case, yeah, they no longer communicate properly with each other. So the Raspberry Pi 5 thinks that it doesn't get enough power and that also means that it will limit the power usage by the USB ports. So that means that you have to add something to the config.txt. So what you can do is nano boot firmware. So you have to add this line, USB max current enable, because I did notice that when I attached a USB drive, that it had a hard time uh, recognizing it or initializing it. So perhaps if you have a very power efficient USB stick that it won't be a problem. But if the USB stick needs some more power, then you might run into issues. Uh, so to counter that, add this line, uh, but you have to make sure that you do have a proper power supply. So all in all, um, Sorry, yeah, there's there's one more thing. Uh, I noticed that the NVMe drive is the first boot device and that I had some issues 
to boot from micro SD or USB because the NVMe drive is the first boot device. Uh, since I um, yeah, like to test different images for the Raspberry Pi 5, then it is making things a whole lot easier to be able to boot at least from USB. Now you can uh, change that with uh, in the EEPROM settings. So uh, yeah. So if you do this command, then you can see there's the line boot order. So it will go from right to left. One is the micro SD slot. Four is USB. 6 is the NVMe drive. Now if you run the script from Argon40, it will put the 6 at the end, so that means that the NVMe drive is the first device that it checks to boot. So yeah, that would mean that you either have to <laughs> remove the NVMe drive uh, to boot from uh, either USB or micro SD, or that you have to change the uh, setting like this, for instance. But this has a very big disadvantage. So um, just to be sure, we'll remove this. So I'll show you what the disadvantage is because now there's a long wait time um, I think that is with the new uh, firmware that enables to boot from the PCIe slot So now you can see that it tries to see if there's any USB device to boot from and it can't find it. But it will take a while before it tries to boot from the NVMe drive. So I guess that, um, yeah, if you don't experiment with different Linux images, then perhaps this is not a big issue for you. But as I said, I like to test different images. I mean, like uh, with the Raspberry Pi 4, I also tested with Fedora because I think at the time Fedora was the first one that had the Vulkan driver for the Raspberry Pi 4. And to be honest, I'm not a big fan of Raspberry Pi OS. Um, so I think for now, I'll just stick with Ubuntu 23.10 and I will keep an eye on when we get a new revision of the Ubuntu 24.04 image to see if the performance issues are gone. So all in all, I'm not that happy with the Argon case. Um, yeah, perhaps if you don't uh, really experiment with different Linux images, then perhaps the solution is fine for you. But for someone that, yeah, is testing a lot of things, this was not the best option for me. But on the other hand, 
uh, I do like that you get the full-size HDMI ports although I have to say that perhaps the connectors are a bit thick the cables that are the HDMI cables that I have but if I use the HDMI port right next to the USB-C port that can be a tight fit so in my case I'm not using the Raspberry Pi 5 with dual monitors I use it with only one monitor so I can use the other HDMI port but perhaps that is also something that you have to consider and to be honest so far I haven't seen a good alternative for the Argon version 3 NVMe case for the Raspberry Pi 5 but who knows if something like that will come up in the future so that's all for now and I hope to see you again in my next video.